saying they've been sitting on their backsides being paid for the last two years. Now they decide to strike and cause misery for millions. I would have agreed with you, Mark, would it? if it would have, if we hadn't heard from that lady that everyone across BA was given a 10% pay cut during the pandemic and now the bosses have given themselves that 10% back but not the other workers. Yeah, Bill That's says that. I think we all deserve a pay increase. What I can't understand is why the CEOs think they should get a pay rise and their staff none. That's, that's the, that isn't, that, that's something I do have an issue with. But anyway, let us know what you think. It's up to you, it's all about you, what your thoughts are. Shall we take a look at today's front pages quickly? The Mail is reporting on the Rwanda story, saying Boris has urged critics to keep an open mind on the policy. That's ahead of his meeting with one critic, particularly Prince Charles. Uh, the Express has an exclusive on a Strasbourg judge that has criticised the secrecy with which the European, the human, the European Court of Human Rights conducted itself over the Rwanda migrant flight ruling. The Guardian reports that airport staff are set to vote on that strike action that we were talking about as the threat of disruption to life in the UK widens. Uh, the drive for green fuel made from wheat and maize is to be relaxed because the PM wants to use it for growing food instead. Uh, the Telegraph says that could affect our net zero pledge. And the Sun says the Queen is back in the saddle. She's riding again after a year uh, of being told to quit because of her mobility issues. Let's go through those papers in a bit more detail with editor of Spiked Online, Tom Slater, and the author, Nikki Holstrom. Morning, you two. Morning. Morning. Last run out of the day. You can relax. <laughs> um, the Times, Tom, looking at um, Ukraine and the fact it is now sort of officially starting the process of joining the EU. Yes, so earlier this week we saw the EU kind of open the door to that process to Ukraine becoming an EU member. This story is about essentially North Macedonia and Albania saying don't count on it happening anytime soon. They've been kind of stuck in the waiting room for some time, despite meeting what often are quite tricky kind of criteria in order to get into the European Union. Their membership has been blocked by Bulgaria, and just kind of pointing out that uh, the politics of the European Union are very fraught. You know, there's all kinds of different interests going on. There are uh, national vetoes over new members. And I think it just underlines the fact that a lot of that, that ceremony that they held earlier this week was basically just a bit of a virtue signal. I, think, yeah. I don't think anyone really expects Ukraine to join any time soon. And I think it's an attempt to just cover over the fact that a lot of EU leading member states have not had a very good war, if we're going to put it that bluntly. They have been seen to be a little bit too flat-footed at best uh, nervous about coming to Ukraine's defence and in some cases quite conciliatory with Russia. So I think this just underlines the fact that that was just one big virtue signal, really, and the EU trying to um, claw back some respectability on the Ukraine issue at this point. Uh, you don't see it as a major step forward? I, I just would be amazed if it ever happened for all oh, kinds really? of different reasons, yeah. um, not least because of... Um, also, I wonder if Ukraine would be a, an easy fit, given the fact that they, you know, would have gone towards to defend their national sovereignty, it's going to be a difficult situation we have got in the EU that is looking to kind of ever centralise more. It could not be an easy relationship. So I can understand why they want to feel they feel a bit more protected, mm. and perhaps. I can, I can understand that position. But, but, uh, Nikki, on to a subject which actually will be very concerning to a lot of women. There's going to be a shortage of HRT patches. Well, actually, this is the remedy. So there has been a shortage. Caroline Noakes, who is the Conservative MP and Chair of the Commons Women and Equality Split Committee, has been campaigning to sort out supply chain issues with um, HRT products. And so now, apparently, a new factory is going to be making <coughs> the um, gel in particular. Uh, it's called Easter Gel, which has been uh, in short supply. So actually, what it is, it's a, it's a good news story for HRT because we've had weeks now, and we've covered it on this show actually about um, the supply chain issue. So finally, it's not just seen as a lifestyle medication anymore. So, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we know it is. Yeah, no, it was, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's good news, oh. yeah. yeah. That is good news. Nice to have good well, news. Well, it is good news, but if, if, if you're a seller, huh? just be a bit just be a bit careful because you don't want to you don't want to be rubbing in your Voltarol when you get up in the morning, do you, into your bad joints and realise you picked up the wrong tube. Oh, I see. I didn't know that was a worry. Can you imagine? Is that a concern? Is that a concern? Well, it's like when, it's like when you, you sort of grab the hairspray and spray under your arms, <laughs> by mistake, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, but I think women, I think women who have HRT 
could probably keep it in their own drawer, don't you think? Just saying. I'm no, just, just it absolutely. It's probably another thing that people to worry about, Stephen. I can imagine it being a Daily Star, a Daily Star headline as well. Yeah, absolutely, it will be. <laughs> my knee pain didn't improve, but my cup size has got three times bigger. <laughs> <laughs> John Smith. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> so, as if you thought that was ridiculous, the next story is even worse, Tom, about pigeons. Yes, Brexit to Pexit. I'm starting to... Uh, oh, 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 I regret my leave. No, so essentially, as a result of Brexit, apparently... Um, uh, in order to take place, to take part rather in um, pigeon racing across the channel, each pigeon needs a kind of veterinary certificate in order to take part. So the pigeon fanciers, the pigeon fancy lobby are very upset about this, pointing out that you need a, uh, a vet at each race entry point. So it's just this kind of absurd red tape. That can't um, be true. Is it April the 1st today? <laughs> it can't be it true. It makes you wonder, but apparently it's, it's something that just wasn't dealt with um, over the course of the Brexit process, and it's something that is, again, so it's Brexit. Brexit. All these problems that Brexit. are coming out, it's so, Brexit. Uh, why, why did we do this? <laughs> the, the, the so, pigeon, <laughs> so pigeon <laughs> racing <laughs> that goes across the channel, each pigeon is going to have a health certificate. Surely, you know, a lot of... A pigeons what about the pigeons fly around the line on their own? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So I'm a freelance pigeon. You could be a freelance pigeon and get away with it. Yeah. It's like people are hiring mercenaries, aren't they? I mean, when you think in World War One, we used pigeons. Yes, I think we did even in World War Two, didn't we? We did. We did. To take messages from the trenches and fly them back home. So this is the EU, is it? This is how we come. This is the EU. They've got a rule for everything, even if it makes absolute sense. Yeah. Well. Where bananas all over again? It's honestly the the main reason. we Says it all. I'm saying nothing. Political. No, but, uh, <laughs> but you can just imagine. Yeah, can't imagine you? what's going through my head. Some right French now. vet saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now you're pigeon across the channel with a new death certificate hung around its neck, wherever. Oh, yeah, oh, this, would it be asked to present this certificate? Oh, exactly. Point, yeah, well. exactly. Oh, they're going to put, put a, a, a stop off point in the middle of the channel. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, to uh, the Murdoch, if Mr. Murdoch is getting divorced again. <laughs> I mean, I kind of admire the man who says at 91, you know what, this isn't working, I need something different. Um, I guess it's quite optimistic, isn't it, thinking that, you know, there's more to come after that, after but that this point. is, of course, to the world-famous Jerry Hall. This is to the world-famous Jerry Hall, but apparently it's very mutual, and, uh, you know, as people do, they've fallen out. I mean, maybe it's the thing that as you get older, you get less tolerant. So you just, you know, if it isn't working, you just think, well, why should I waste the next three years of my life or whatever? You know that his last wife signed a prenup, so there was only a limited amount that um, she got. What do we know of what Jerry might be getting? Well, apparently there's a prenup again, because I was just thinking, if you were one of Murdoch's children, wouldn't you be like, Dad, can't you just stay married to this wife? Come on. <laughs> and apparently there is, a, there is a prenup, but they've got a vast property portfolio which will need dividing or probably selling. So, uh, so all the headlines are saying that she may get a, a £10 million a year plus a private jet. Yes, it's about up to, uh, upkeeping her lifestyle. So yes. she won't get a lump sum, but she, whatever lifestyle she's now gotten used to, which will probably be quite opulent, that will be maintained. So. Yeah, I think she's probably earned it. Yes, I would think so too, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, it was that's quite a—it was quite a stunning still, wedding at the time because yeah. everybody thought he was old then, but he's still going strong. Well, he's always been old, hasn't he? That's far as I can remember. <laughs> Apparently, he is still a workaholic, whereas Jerry likes the likes a lazier lifestyle now. And uh, you know, she does. She likes her own friends and everything. But you don't know. You don't. We don't hear what has actually caused the split. But <laughs> clearly, they decided that. <laughs> Enough's enough. Look at James with the glasses on there. James, well, I was forcing a smile out when his dad was getting married. Oh, what was the phrase that uh, an onlooker said? That she had found that she was in succession, the well-known yeah. um, Sky Atlantic thing about, uh, basically, based on the Murdoch. Based, based on the Murdoch, yeah. She found she was in succession when actually she what she wanted to be in was Ab Fab. Uh, and she'll now be able to be in Ab Fab, <laughs> according to her own Ab Fab Well, that's part of a million quid a month. Well, why not? Um, GCSEs are getting a bit woke, Tom, according to the Mail. Yes, um, so this is Nadim Zahawi, the Education Secretary, hitting back at this exam board OCR for dropping, amongst other um, poets, Philip Larkin, as well as um, Wilfred Owen, and what? it's all part of this boost for diversity, essentially, so wanting to bring in more, as the story says here, um, poets of colour and disabled and LGBTQ plus voices. I think... One of the things that's, you know, aside from everything else that really irritates me about these kinds of stories is this idea that all, the assumption almost being that, say, black British students or British Asian students can't relate to people like Philip Larkin or can't relate to people like Wilfred Owen. 
essentially because of the colour of their skin. It seemed like a really anti-education, anti-universal, kind of slightly racist idea. And Nadine Zahawi makes the point when, that when he first came to this country, obviously he's um, Iraqi Kurdish, um, it was through learning English literature and some of these quite canonical works that he came to better understand his new home. And I think you're denying that experience to a lot of people by, again, just wanting to constantly update these things. I understand, you know, the canon is never set. You're going to want to change it. You're going to want to adapt it and all the rest of it. But it seems to often be bringing in quite contemporary people as well, which, again, seems to just come at the cost of that education for quite unpleasant reasons, in my view. And Wilfred Owen was gay anyway. So why isn't that interesting to explore? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I studied him at A-level and absolutely adored him. So I, Me too. And I'm bisexual, so I, you know, I see him as part of, you know, the family. So why, why can't that be one of the elements? I, uh, oh, no, I, uh, I, what, what stuns you is, um, who are these people who sit down yeah. and make these decisions? And why don't they hear themselves making such decisions and thinking, I am being a bit over the top here? I'm being a bit woke. It's just the direction of travel, unfortunately. You know, I mean, it almost seems like it doesn't matter what the government says about it. It doesn't matter what um, you know, society in general says about it. These things just kind of continue on. I suppose they would say. I suppose they would say in their defence, they might say, yes, we need to be inclusive. Well, we would all support that. But in order to be, in order to draw up a, a timetable, you know, an, um, the, an agenda. No, I don't mean that. What do I mean? Yeah. A, you know, a, 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 a what? Syllabus. Yeah, in order to grow up, draw up a syllabus, exactly, you, you can only have uh, so many things. So it being inclusive means you have to actually push yeah, some things out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But it's I don't, I mean, I'm just putting that forward as a view, but I don't think it myself. I, <laughs> I really <laughs> I can't do. I, I, just, I just find it very, very odd, all that sort of thing. It's like the new Pride stamps that have been released by the post office. Mm -hmm. Um, sort of your cartoony things of, of men with, with fairy wings on and things, so that's all, yeah. what's that meant to be? Mm. How's that inclusive? It's a lot. It's very stereotyped. It's just silly. Give me a stamp of Alan Turing. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, and, a hero, and, and yeah. Grey, not some cartoon of someone looking... I'm quite literally a fairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I don't know who you think they're helping with that. So have we got time for the story about cheese? Oh, that's very quickly. Very short, I will tell you, the one in cheese is really bad for you, the end. So apparently you should only eat vegan cheese if you actually are vegan and craving cheese, but it's got no um, good nutritional value. It's really, really bad for you. So only have it if you're craving What's cheese. What's it made of? It depends. Um, random proteins, but there's lots of fat in it, more fat than regular cheese in some of oh. them. So, yeah, right. it's not healthy, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, if you are vegan and you want a bit of cheese, fair enough, but for the rest of us... Stick with your Stilton. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> still Stop non, it. Still <laughs> on toast. Oh, Melted still. It's the best. Love. Is it? I've never yeah. tried that. Oh, yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> there you go. Um, <laughs> Nikki, Tom. Um, Thank you very much. You can go now. <laughs> Thank it's, you very okay, much. We're going to work, we've just got to yeah. say. We are going to our other jobs oh, now. You. Yeah. you have other jobs? I know, it's appalling, isn't it? Well, well everyone just stopped at half nine. <laughs> 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 Who knew? Who knew? There you go.